What's going on, everybody? I'm Patrick from Powlax, where we create confident coaches because confident coaches create great environments for players. And this video is all about goalie play. We're gonna start off talking about how goalies overcome the fear of getting hit with the ball, talk through the strategies we're gonna use as the ball is being shot from different distances, talk through the arc and stance, as well as some of the ways that goalies can lead and communicate to their teams, and then we're gonna do a deep dive into how we want to warm up goalies and some of the issues that we're gonna find when we're trying to warm up goalies before games sometimes. Before we get started, this video is brought to you by Palax.com and the Palax Gold Membership. The Palax Gold Membership gives you access to all of the Palax play Playbook PDFs that you can print and put into your own playbook, as well as access to the Palax Digital Playbook with the ability to share all of the plays with your team. So basically, you head over to Lacrosse Lab, and I've built an entire playbook for you that you don't have to go through, sit through, and build yourself. And you can then share any of these plays with your team and track who watches them through Lacrosse Lab. So basically, you sign up for Palax Gold, you're going to get access to the Palax Playbook through Lacrosse Lab, and then you got to get your own Lacrosse Lab account for your team, and it will then allow you to share all of the plays that I've created that reference all of the videos I've made that your players can then watch. And then you'll be able to watch what players watch, which videos that you share, and it really helps the players get a better understanding and learn in multiple ways all of the things that we're trying to get them to do on the field. Now let's get into our goalie play video. Our first topic for goalies is how can we help them be less fearful of getting hit with the ball? And I think the big thing to recognize is that the majority of goalies are still fearful of getting hit with the ball. Like no one's hopping into batting cages and getting hit with the ball because it's going to psych them up and they're going to be less afraid later. Like no one wants to get hit with a lacrosse ball. The key is that as players get better and as they experience more shots, the motivation to make the save gets bigger and it overshadows the fear of getting hit with the ball. And so now as goalies are starting out, we can help them in a couple of ways. The first way is using different balls, right? Using a tennis ball is going to allow them to track the ball and try to make the saves without the fear of getting hit with an actual lacrosse ball. You can also use the pinky balls. Tennis balls will curve from time to time, but for the most part, if we use a lighter ball, that's going to help quite a bit. Now, there are two other topics I want to talk about. First is that as the players around them improve, they're going to get hit less. The worst thing you can do for a seven-year-old goalie is put them into a game where the other seven-year-olds think they're just going to shoot as hard as they can from right on top of the crease and then hit the goalie, right? If the kids can't aim and they're not aiming for the, the sides of the goal around the goalie, it's going to be pretty tough to put them into a situation where they're going to like overcome the fear of getting hit because you know they're not even trying to make saves at that point. They're just getting hit. So as players improve, the amount they're going to get hit is going to decrease. Now, the final topic I want to discuss is goalies in shooting drills. There's nothing better for a shooter than shooting on a live goalie, and so some coaches will put goalies into shooting drills. Now, here's the key. The goalie has to be able to track, follow, and find the shooter and then be able to make the save before each shot. If the shots are coming too quickly where it is overwhelming rather than challenging to find the shooter and then make the save, the goalie should hop out of that drill. The next topic we're going to discuss are the strategies we're going to use as shots are being taken from different distances. and We're going to divide the field into three sections. Anything beyond 10 yards is far. Anything from 7 to 10 yards is mid-range, and anything 6 yards and in is in tight. Now, when we talk about shots that are far, we are actually going to be able to see the ball and then make the save, right? So as players are here, you see the ball, this goalie has the ability to see it, react to it, make the save. Now, all of the research that we have in terms of how our eyes perceive balls that are being shot at you is taken from tennis. And what the researchers recognized is that you actually see the ball come at you in frames. So it's almost like you think about a movie. You've got like 30 frames per second. As the ball is released, you track for that little bit of time and that's where you can start to make your reactions. Now, some people like to train goalies to attack the ball. Other people like to train goalies to stay on the same plane and then just move their stick to the location that the ball is going to move through. But that's kind of for your goalie training. But in terms of how you're going to actually be able to see it, that's what we have from far shots. We can see it, react to it, make the save. Now, once we hop into mid-range saves, these become a little bit more difficult. And the key is 
does the defense interrupt the shot at all? Like this shot was taken from pretty close and the goalie made a, a really, really good save. Now, if the shot is contested, that's where we're going to have a really good opportunity to make the save because the shooter is going to have someone in their hands. And if the defense plays really well, we're going to have a better chance to make those saves from those mid range distances. Now, finally, we have in tight. It is absolutely impossible to make a save by seeing it, reacting to it, and then making the save from this close to the goal, as you can see right here, right? As this player catches the ball on the doorstep right here, there's no way the goalie is going to be able to see it come out of his stick, react to it, and then make a save. So what we're going to focus on is doing two things. The first is matching stick. Goalies have a much bigger head than the other player, so they're going to try to put the stick over the stick and the release point of the shooter. They're also going to be able to try to read the tendencies of a shooter. So if you know a shooter really likes to fake low, shoot high, you're going to be able to recognize that and then find the tendency of the shooter and then make the save. Now the next thing we're going to talk about are the goalie's stance and the arc they're going to use to move around the field. So as a shooter is moving around the field or the ball is passed, you want to think about the goalie's shoulders as laser beams going forward. They want to keep the shooter between their laser beams so that the shot is coming from the same direction each time. Now, in order to do that, they are going to move around an arc. Now, the arc is just the locations they're going to stand as the ball is moving around the field. Now, as you play on the arc, the key is make sure that you are in the middle of the goal. Notice that he never loses track of the ball. He's going to turn to face him, and then once he starts to come to this other side, he's going to get to his pipe, and now he's in what we would call his arc. Now, when we talk about the stance, as the goalie is in his stance, notice he's got his hands in front of him. They're relaxed. His top hand is about chin height, and he's on, I'd say, probably the balls of his feet. He's not like super forward. He's not super back, but he's just in a stance where he's relaxed and he's ready to make a save. You, As a goalie, you never want to be like super tense because when you think about how our muscles work, when you're super tense, you have to relax and then move. But if you're relaxed, you can move much quicker as you are seeing the shots being taken. Final topic we're going to discuss before we do a deep dive into the warm up is what are some of the things that goalies can do to be a leader on their team? Now, as I say that, the first thing I think of is if this is a beginner goalie, they don't need to be worried about commanding their team. They need to get used to how the game works before they can direct any players on what to do, right? But so, as they are in the games for the first few times, the only thing they need to think about is making the saves, right? See the ball, react to the ball, make the save, control the ball, and then find themselves within their clear. Now, here are a couple tools that we can use to help them as they begin to learn the game and then how they can command and become a leader on the field. The first thing is they can help the defense out by giving the ball location as it moves around the field. So for the most part, coaches are going to communicate the field as it relates to the goalie's position because the goalie's position never changes. So top left is to the very top of the field and left. Top center is directly in front of them. Top right is up and to the right. Side left, crease, side right, back left, X, and then back right are all locations derived from the goalie. Now, as the ball is passed, the goalie can communicate those to help off-ball defensemen as they are trying to look between the ball and their own player. That's probably the first thing that goalies can do to really help them, and, and they can do it as they're in their warm-up. They can do it as they're in practice. All they do is as they're going through their stances, the ball will move. They'll say, you know, top left, top right side right and as they're moving around their arc in their stance they are then communicating those locations so that's the first thing the second thing is team huddles right whether we score or we get scored against we want to bring the defense in give each other daps if we got scored on we can talk through some of the things that we can try to do better but by bringing all of the players who were on the field in for a huddle, not to like sit there and blame everybody, but to take accountability for what everybody could have done better, that's a huge way to build the camaraderie and to build the leadership principles of the defense as a whole and just of the goalie. The next thing that they can do in terms of leading the players on the field is they can instruct the on-ball defensemen. Goalies 
because they can see the entire field, they can watch the game as it's happening because they're in a good vantage point. They're not like in playing the field like all the other players. They have the ability to see everything as it happens. So they can instruct the on-ball and the off-ball players to make actions in specific times, right? So a big one is if a player is dodging from behind, as they come up the wing, they can tell the defenseman when they need to push, when they need to try to turn them back, and that will help the on-ball defenseman. Now, the final thing that they should learn to communicate is any feeds inside. As the players on the outside of the field, if they throw the ball to the middle, they should yell check, and as they yell check, all of the players in the middle of the field should come down on the hands of the players who are inside because hopefully they won't then catch the ball and then score. The final topic we're going to discuss in this video is goalie warm-ups. Now, goalies must receive a warm-up before ever seeing live shots in every practice and every game. And for some goalies, this is the only time that they ever have to practice the technique of making saves. And so it's an extremely important time. Now, who should be warming up the goalie? The person who's warming up the goalie should be a decent shooter that can shoot almost to the level of all of the players who are playing on the field when they're actually playing live games. Now, for some coaches, this can be really tough because they're trying to think through all the different things and how they're going to manage the entire team, and oftentimes the goalie kind of gets left behind. But if the coach can come before practice to warm up the goalie, that's a great time. If they have to send a player to warm up the goalie, that can work, but the player has to understand this is not shooting practice time. You're not trying to sting corners. You're trying to activate the goalie's awareness and help them learn to make saves. Now, the final person that I really think should probably learn how to warm up the goalie and learn how to become a good shooter is the parent of the goalie because they're going to be traveling with that player and if they can be in charge of those warm-ups that's really going to help the player develop because they're going to be getting those warm-ups before every practice and before every game no matter what before games especially at the youth level say you're at a big set of fields there's not going to be an extra goal around. There's not going to be a lot of space. And once the game before you ends, the team is going to have about, you know, five minutes to run drills that they're going to want the goalie to be a part of before they start the actual game. So you're going to have to warm them up against nothing, right? You're going to have to find a spot that doesn't have any people and you're going to warm them up with an imaginary goal. And they're just doing what we talked about earlier. They're activating their ability to see the ball, react to the ball and make the saves. Now, if you can get some live reps in the goal in those two to five minutes before the game actually starts, that's awesome, but recognize that you're going to probably have to find a space that doesn't have a goal in order to get the goalie that warm-up before those games. Now, as you're warming up the goalie, it's a really good time to practice areas that give the goalie fits. Like, if there's a specific shot that's giving them trouble, focus on that for a bit of time. Then, when you are warming up the goalie, it's a great time to teach the goalie the progressions of after they make a save, where should they be looking? Are they looking upfield, then checking down to their left and their right, and are they getting out of way? So it's just a good time to add in the progressions of live gameplay. Now, the final thing that you should add in is passes from the goalie, right? So as the goalie makes the save and they look upfield, you should have another player, maybe it's someone who's on the injured reserve list, who is moving around the field that they can then throw to. Now, you're not going to want to do this all the time, but it is a great thing to add in once you get into those 100% shots. Now, as we get into the ideas of how we want to warm a goalie up, we want to figure out where we're going to be aiming at different times during the warm-up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide the goal horizontally, so we've got a top, mid, and low, and then we're also going to want to divide it vertically into left, mid, and right. And so as we are looking at the goal, if we divide it into corners, the goalie's not going to have to read the ball very much if we're just shooting for this corner. But if we go high, mid, low, now the goalie's going to have to react to whether we shoot top left or top right, and they're going to have to read a bit more. Now, this is preference of the goalie. The goalie that I worked with most of the time didn't like having to read early. They just wanted to work on the techniques, and it really worked for him. Other goalies, they start by reading either side really well, and they love it. So make sure that you ask the goalie before you begin the warm-up what kind of progression they like to go through. Now, here is a, a kind of a visual of the progression that I like to use. You've got stick side high, off stick side high, stick side hip, off stick side hip, stick side low, five hole, off stick side low, and then bouncers close to the goal, meaning inside of the crease, and then bouncers far from the goal, meaning outside of the crease. Then we increase the speed. We do high heat, shooting high and fast, then we mix it up to shoot anywhere, and then we take a few shots to focus on any problem areas, then I do some shooting off of dodge, shooting off a of catch, and then shooting in tight where they learn how to match stick. Now, 
here is some example of our warm up. So I'm going to start, I'm going to be at about 12 yards away from the goalie, and I'm going to start by shooting stick side high. Take a couple shots there, then I'll move to off stick side. Then you've got stick side hip, then you've got off stick side hip, and I'm taking like four to five shots in each one of these positions. Then we've got stick side low, which I hit stick side hip a couple times. So stick side low. Now we won't ever move on until he makes a save in that position. Like we're not just going to rattle through him. So if he makes a good save, then we'll move on to, to the next, next side. Now we'll go off stick low. And as he's learning to see the ball and react to the ball, everything is kind of improving. Then we're going to go to bouncers close to the goal. And then we're going to go through high heat. Now, this section of high heat was actually a problem area that he had. There were a couple of players from some teams that we had played who did this riser from the wing, and it really gave him fits. Now, we worked on this a few times during the warm-up, and in the next couple of games, he was lights out against this type of shot. It was absolutely awesome to see. He had to get a few reps of learning how to track the ball come out of the stick at that angle, but once he knew it, it was absolutely awesome. Um, the next thing we do is we mix it up. So we shoot a bunch of different shots from a bunch of different angles, just kind of go through the progression of shooting. He's making saves. At this point, I'm shooting almost to 100%. And now once he gets into the game, he's going to be ready and activated. Now, there's one more thing I want to share with you, and this is more of an advanced tactic, but playing goalie is really, really difficult. All eyes are on the goalie all the time during the game. So I like to do something where I put a little bit of extra pressure on our goalie at the end of warmups on, say, like five days out of an entire season. So what we do is we call all the players up to watch the goalie. Now, this puts a ton of pressure on them, the same kind of pressure that they're going to be in, in, say, overtime in a really big game. And now, I allow the goalie to pick a percentage of shots that they have to save out of 10. So I think in this one, he wanted to save seven of the 10 shots that I take. Now, I don't take this easy at all. And so what we do is we wager, right? We're wagering sprints on how many saves he can make. And so I'm not going to be unfair where I get too close to the goal. I'm going to I'm gonna shoot basically the same shot over and over and over again. But if I score four, they all run. If he saves seven, they don't have to run. And so it puts some pressure on him that's realistic to the same type of um, challenges that they're going to have to have as they are in the actual game. It's just a really fun way that to kind of activate that competitive nature of the goalie and to put a bit of pressure on him. And, and he really enjoyed it. Some goalies might not like it, but he really enjoyed it. But so that's our video on goalie play. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Definitely let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.